Hi there. Welcome to the Pioneer Class of 1955 Oral History. I'm Morgan Wheat, and this is Jack Palvino, one of the members of the Class of 1955. Having a nice little interview today. Wonderful. All right. Well, let's start from the beginning. Where okay. did you go to high school? Aquinas Institute All right. on Dewey Avenue. Aquinas Institute. That's right. And so why did you choose St. John Fisher? Well, most of us in the first class actually came here because of Aquinas. Okay. We followed the bazillion priests here. Okay. Our parents thought that the priests were good for us in high school, and they thought they would be good for us in college as well. Right. So a good portion of our pioneer class followed from Aquinas right across the city to St. John Fisher. So you must have known a lot of people in your class then already, right? Did they graduate with well, you in high school? Well, we knew quite a few, but we had a big class. At Aquinas, yeah. there were over 375 okay. graduates, okay. all male, okay. in our class. Right. So even though there were, I think, uh, 40 or 50 who came over here, yeah. we knew some of them better than others. Yeah. Yeah. Did any of your close friends from high school follow you here, or was it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Leo Kesselring, one of my classmates, did. Uh, Andy Virgo, and quite a few of the guys. Uh, awesome. That must have been nice. Don Minch, who yeah. liked it so much here, he's still here. <laughs> 60 years later, <laughs> he's a slow learner. <laughs> he's our, our math nerd yeah. who still teaches it here. But he was in my class for eight years, yeah. high school, then college. That must have been nice to have friends to come with it you. Was. Yeah. It was. It made everybody feel at home. Yeah. Right off the bat, definitely. Yeah. So how was your first day? Wow, you're really testing I'm, a memory, aren't I'm you? I'm moving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the first day at, uh, at Fisher was really interesting that I recall because, first of all, there was only one building. Yeah. And secondly, it wasn't built yet. Right. So what we came into basically was a construction site. And there were no windows. And during some of our classes, we kept warm because there was no heating unit yet. Wow. With Bunsen burners. Wow. And several did not have any uh, windows in mm. it as, as well as doors. Right. So that it really was not like going to a campus. Yeah. It was like going to a construction company. That must have been tough. Winter comes early here <laughs> yeah, in Rochester, New York. Well, it was. It was a little cool in September. Yeah. So we were uh, on the first floor. I remember that. And also Father Murphy was our first president, a great priest and a great president. And he said, you know, the old saying, look to your left and look to your right. One of them won't be here in four <laughs> years. And I hope it's you. <laughs> but he was right. Yeah. About 110 were in our class. And we ended up with 57 graduates. Wow. And of the 57, 37 of us remain 60 years later. Nice. It's not too bad. No. Hey, right. we'll take it. You're right. I'll, I'll be happily taking it. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, so you went to a Catholic high school and yes. a Catholic um, college. Yes. Now, Father Murphy did state when the college opened that all faiths were welcome to the college. Yes. Did you see people of different faiths, or was it mostly Catholic men? Not very many. Yeah, just mostly. Quite Catholic. honestly, it was, I would say, maybe 95% Catholic. Yeah. Because of the strong Aquinas influence from right. uh, across the city. But we had a few who were uh, non-Catholics. Didn't make any difference to anyone, but... Yeah. No, it was an open-door policy. Good deal. Quite frankly, I think uh, they would have taken someone from <laughs> Mars to get enrollment in a school that had no history, no building, <laughs> no doors, and no, no publicity. Windows. Yeah. When did the windows and doors, when did the building become complete? Well, it wasn't completed in our first year. Yeah. So it was, I think, the second and third year that we were here that the building uh, was totally completed. Okay. And there were various stages that are more memorable than others. The one that I recall is the day they put the steeple and the cross up. Yeah. And the big 
derricks were lifting it into the sky and the Indian workers were climbing around the girders as it went up and we were given the half day off and as a matter of fact they said if any of you would like to help <laughs> and then we said no <laughs> thanks anyhow but our balance isn't that good <laughs> and that was the day I still remember when yeah. the girders went up and the cross went up on wow. St. John Fisher College yeah that's awesome isn't it you know the big logo of our school and you got to see that go up that's awesome yes there was nothing on the roof at that time yeah that's cool that was the end of our first year so did you have like a place to eat? We only had the one building. Was there any cafeteria or any food service? Well, we had a little place we called the behind the green door where one of our classmates brought sandwiches to sell. And uh, his name was Bob Frucci. Went on to do very well in the refuse business. <laughs> And he brought sandwiches that he and his family made yeah. to sell to us. Uh, we were all day hoppers. Yeah. And there were no dorms here, of course. Right. So he brought sandwiches behind the green door. And uh, w at the end of the year, uh, Father Murphy looked at his books. And he said, you're losing money here. And so <laughs> Father wrote him a check. Yeah. for the amount of money he lost so he could at least break even and stay in school. Yeah. So that was our cafeteria. Yeah, behind the Sandwiches green door. behind the green door. And this cafeteria, I think, was built in 1954, I think. Well, you have a better memory than I. I it may have been. And was that, did you go to that cafeteria then? I don't recall it, to no. be honest with you. That, that, I think, was still behind the green door. It may have okay. been a little more formalized, but right. it wasn't in any sense anything but a picnic yeah. inside. Okay. Yeah. You, we brought the ice and we brought the <laughs> a few tables. So you really brought your own food? Besides yes. Gotcha. Yeah. We really brought our own lunch. Yeah. And you lived with your parents? You yes. lived with your family? Oh, yes. Did most people do that? Or yes. Did some people have apartments? Yes. No, very few had apartments. Most of them lived at home. We were day hoppers. Okay. And most of the families were of modest means. And most of them were there because the parents wanted them to be there. Yeah. At least that was true in my case. And I, I think in most of my classmates' cases, too. Yeah. Right. So these people came from modest means. Was this school considered... Um, expensive at the time or was it um, well for that time was it expensive it was yeah but uh, you're talking 50 and a hundred dollars a semester right <laughs> to, to start with but this was a group also of first-generation students yeah most had not gone to college in the families at this time mm -hmm. so they would sacrifice whatever it took yeah. to attend college as a result of that. I know I personally borrowed uh, $200 from my uncle to be able to go here yeah. and repaid him after I graduated. But without that, would not have been able to attend here. Right. Were there a lot of scholarships that Fisher gave out? There were a few, but not many. Not many. It, it just had started. Yeah. Right. There was no history. Right. How was it graduating from a school with no history? Well, we had no idea, frankly, that Fisher would develop into the wonderfully large uh, and successful place it is today. Yeah. It, I would say, was unknown. We had no idea. First of all, how we would be received as Fisher graduates, right. and secondly, how the school would be perceived as a result of how the graduates did. Right. So there was nothing but question marks when we graduated. Yeah. Now, we had some people who for the first time went on to, as a result of the strong recommendations of President Murphy and Dean O'Mara, 
mm -hmm. uh, law schools and to medical schools. And when they saw St. John Fisher, they didn't know what that meant because right. it didn't mean anything yet. Right. So I guess I would say unknown. Unknown. So let's see. This is still a liberal arts college, and it yes. was a liberal arts college at the beginning. Yes, it was a liberal arts college. It still is. Yeah. Right. What um, was... Did you have core classes like we have now, or what was your curriculum like? Yeah, basically we did have a basic liberal arts uh, curriculum. Right. And we did our English, we did our history, we did theology and philosophy, and some of us took a language, and I know I followed my uh, unsuccessful attempt at continuing my training in the Italian language after two years at Aquinas with two years here. And I think it was Father Rano who said, Jack, you are without doubt the slowest learning <laughs> Italian I've ever met. <laughs> so <laughs> they were trying, but uh, yeah. uh, not successful, I would say. <laughs> because our parents would only talk Italian when they didn't want us to understand what they were saying. Right. So it was like a protective unit. <laughs> Um, were you close with the professors? I know I'm yes. really close with my department. I don't, right. Were you close with your professors? Yes, we were. Yes, we were. As a matter of fact, we would often go down, it's not called anymore, to the Maplewood on the East Avenue, which is now the back nine, is it? Okay, yeah. yeah the Maplewood. And we'd have a beer with our priest teachers. <laughs> uh, after class and uh, on weekends or whatever. And because we were all starting together, we got to be very close with the priests yeah. and the other lay faculty members as well. We're a very small class, a shrinking class that started at 100, mm -hmm. but with only 100 students, and I don't know the total amount, the number for the faculty at that time, but there weren't many. Yeah. I think it was 22. Was it 22? I think so, but I don't know how that plays with departments. Yeah, depending on the department. Right. Yeah, but even, you know, that's 22 times 5. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you're there. And you were a history major, Yes, correct? I was. Why did you choose to be a history major? Well, I'd always found history to be very attractive, and I had a thought in the back of my head of, attending uh, law school also. Okay. And so I decided to start out uh, without any clear direction academically, but I knew it in the back of my mind what I really wanted to do was get into radio. Yeah. And to please my parents, I went to history and the pre-law major. Mm -hmm. But I, to this day, enjoyed reading up on history, yeah. both locally and nationally. Yeah. How many history professors were there? Do you remember? There was one. One? Leo Minnelli, Father Minnelli. And we would go after, uh, he was quite an interesting character. Uh, he'd go down and discuss the class <laughs> at the Maplewood with a beer. <laughs> and we thought that would assure us of at least an A or a B. Yeah. Not true. <laughs> we found that out in a hurry, and that cut down the crowd at the Maplewood after a while. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. How difficult were your classes? Were they mostly lecture style, or? They were lecture style, yeah. and they were very difficult because they were very small, yeah. and you couldn't sleep, and you couldn't hide. Right. So, Father Murphy and Father O'Mara said, because we were a new college, that it's going to be very easy to get into, yeah. but very hard to stay in. Right. And that proved to be true. Yeah. So it was a lot of essays, did you yes. test stuff like that? We did. Yeah, it, I cannot remember one multiple choice. Yeah. Everything was essay work. Yeah. Was that very similar to Aquinas, what you were used to in high school? Yes, very similar. I was the same 
philosophy. A lot of the couple of the same teachers who graduated with us and came over, who had taught us at Aquinas, and then they taught us here. Awesome. So it was the same style. Right. And most of them were priests, correct? Most of them were at that time. Okay. Yeah. And I think I did see there was one female faculty member? Yes. Uh, I've forgotten her name, though. Was this the Spanish teacher Maybe. or Zelda Lyons, who was our registrar? I think it was the Spanish teacher. Because right. Zelda came as the school started, but they did hire <laughs> right. a female professor. Right. Yes. I think it was a Spanish, and since I didn't take Spanish, that was, <laughs> it's not in my experience. <laughs> but Zelda Lyons was part of the registrar? Yes, yeah, she was the registrar. Nice. Yeah, I remember. Kind of surprised I remember that name myself. <laughs> <laughs> so were you in any um, clubs or activities or athletic teams on campus? Yes. Well, we didn't have any athletic teams. No. We had intramural sports. Okay. Uh, we, we had a couple of interesting situations that developed where we had a, a basketball team and I was the center which shows you how good we were <laughs> at five foot seven we decided to uh, play the University of Rochester in what we thought was a scrimmage so we yeah. went over there and they eked out an 80 to 20 win over us <laughs> <laughs> and the next day unfortunately uh, Lowell McMillan, who was very generous to the school later in life here and contributed to the radio room, announced on the radio that this was Fisher's debut in intercollegiate <laughs> athletics. And five of us were called into the president's <laughs> office for an explanation of that. Yeah. And it uh, wasn't easy, but we wormed our way out of it after yeah. a while. But we had intramural sports. We played at the CYO downtown because there was no gym yeah. and intramural baseball and things of uh, that nature. And I was active. I was on the student government. I was vice president. And then we had a very successful debating team, yeah. which in our junior year was undefeated and yeah. uh, won the national championship. Wow. And we were tied uh, at the end of the year with the one school that had tied us yeah. in the debating and uh, topic, which for that year was whether or not to recognize uh, some portions of uh, China. Yeah. <laughs> and the one team that we tied with was Harvard. Wow. So we were very proud of that. That's awesome. Yeah, especially being a brand new school. Right. That's awesome. Yeah, Don Pandina was a... Bob Nittle and a lot of uh, John Pettigrass. Uh, we had a good eight-person uh, debating team. So we did athletics and we had some, we also had some uh, drama. We, we had some plays that we put on, the, the importance of being earnest. And we had some, uh, we had a glee club. I was in that too. Yeah. Directed by Frank Pilecki, which is, Pretty decent, not great, but <laughs> <laughs> almost on key most of the time. So we we're quite active for just being a new school. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How did you get to the um, intramurals field? Did you have to walk? Yes. Yeah. How far no was No roads. <laughs> yeah. They were on the back, uh, just behind Kearney. Okay. Gotcha. Walked everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I walked everywhere. And the little white house over there was... A classic, you know, stayed for years. Yeah. Yeah. So you're talking about, um, you know, the debate over Red China. Um, yeah. And I, I know this is during the Cold War. How did that have an effect on campus? Did it? Did it not? It didn't much, no. to be honest with you. Right. Uh, in later years, it did because as we grew, the class behind us uh, began to attract more veterans using the GI Bill. Yeah. In fact, uh, one of the students here was Frederick Joseph Battesio, and the bill was named the bill for Frederick Joseph Battesio and others. And he was a Fisher student, and they used those funds, and that helped enrollment after our year. Yeah. Wow. So it's like coming into a room with a, an empty blackboard yeah. or a blank canvas. 
and the pioneer class drew what would be for them uh, a new picture and that was the the beginning picture of St. John Fisher College nowhere near and we could have never envisioned any of us yeah where Fisher is today yeah. wow. inconceivable it really was yeah um, so you graduated with 58 people yes. and were you close with all of them by the time you graduated yes they were all it was a pretty tight-knit group yes it was I would say definitely yeah. we had because they're such a small group to begin with and because we had suffered the loss of half of our right. student body through attrition and through not being able to pass the exams properly why we were a very close group yeah and i think that we still are even though we're small yeah. but a lot of us have known each other since high school yeah and that's quite a long period for some of us. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, we have now, we have orientation and we have freshman seminar to um, teach incoming students about what this college is like. You guys were the first class, so you didn't have that. But no. for the class below you, did you do anything to help them, you know, welcome them to the school? We had an informal talk with them to answer questions that they might have. Okay. Since we were the history, no one else had any other knowledge of what the school offered right. but us. So they did develop a nice program. I think it was uh, Dean O'Mara to have each member of the new incoming class meet with one member of our class. Okay. And we told them what we could about what the school was. And at that time, it was a very small school, and it had no PR image. Shall I put it that way? Right. It just it wasn't it wasn't there. One of the things I did to get through school was sell magazines, and one of the magazines I sold door to door was the Catholic Extension magazine. So one of my territories was East Rochester. Okay. And I went up to one door, and a very pleasant elderly Italian lady, after I had sold her a subscription to the magazine, and I told her I'm going to school. And he said, where do you go to school? And I said, St. John Fisher College. And she said, eh, it's a better than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we were unknown. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me put it that way. <laughs> Um, so you went into East Rochester to sell magazines. Yeah. We often now as students go to East Rochester or Pittsford yes. just to do things. Did you guys hang out in those towns at all or kind of we, stay? We did. We went to McConnell's Dairy, which uh, I was just told is now the Pittsford. Uh, oh, Pittsford Dairy. Dairy. Yeah. And we would go there for ice cream yeah. and things like that. And we did go to East Rochester, yes, because a lot of our students, Benny Alfieri and uh, some of my classmates, uh, we're in our East yeah. Rochester residence. Yeah. So yes, we did. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and you were the vice president, you said, of the SGA, Student right. Government. Right, what, Student Council, yeah. Um, what responsibilities came with that? Well, <laughs> there weren't too many at the time, <laughs> <laughs> but they were trying to direct us to formulate what we would like to do as a social life for students and a voice for students. Yeah. So we began a formative student government, I would say. And uh, Jack Murphy was the president, and I was vice president. Uh, so we just drafted what the students told us they would like to see Fisher do. Okay. So we were more of a large focus group, I would say, than anything else, so that the administration would kind of know what's on the small group of students minds yeah that's basically what we did what kind of did you put out any functions for the students you're saying like social things well if we would have a, a plan for a a student a dance or something of that nature we would take a consensus where people wanted to have it and uh things of that nature yeah so that 
basically we tried to do what very little social planning was involved in that area. Yeah. And those dances were with Naz, right? With Naz, yeah. yeah. What was the relationship between Fisher and Naz? Well, I would say during the day, it was not as close as it was at night. <laughs> <laughs> but we were very uh, cordial with the uh, Naz with the gals. And when we would, I remember going to a couple dances uh, where we would have to return our dates to their dorm over at NAS, uh, and all, only to have a nun waiting for us there at the door <laughs> to make sure that we weren't too tardy there, yeah. uh, and things of that nature. But I would say the, the students got along well yeah. at that time, and uh, I think they still do. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, was it hard to go to an all, well, you were used to it in high school, going to an all-male. It was natural to go to yeah. an all-boys school. Right. Some of us joke that we never knew girls till we were 20. <laughs> so, uh, did you guys mostly go to Naz or did Naz girls come up here sometimes? Both. Yeah. yeah they were both. Yeah, we were the newcomers. Yeah. And they were the older school. Yeah, they were more established. They were more established. So we went to a few dances there, things like that. And, but this was, especially in our year, non-existent. Yeah. So there was nothing that like the Teddy dance that you have, that is, goes on every year here. Right. We had nothing that went on here every year. Right. And if it was going to be created, we had to create it. Right. And if the guys weren't interested in it, it didn't happen. Right, right. So that's basically the pioneer approach, which yeah. is really, as you look back, amazing uh, how it developed. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a great, uh, it was a great experience, yeah. and, and in many ways, unlike being a, a member of a big class at a big school with a big history, we're little class, little school, little history. Yeah. So as a result of that, we all stayed kind of tight. Yeah, that's. Awesome. Are you still close with the Naz girls that you? Some of them we know. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. I would say more with the Fisher guys, though. Yeah. Um, tell me about orchid dances. Were those just dances? I was looking through old newspapers, and they talked yeah. a lot about those. Boy, that's a name for the past. <laughs> the orchid dances that we had, as I recall, at Oak Hill. Is that, was that in the article? Or, yeah, I don't know. I think, they might have been. I think that referred to the corsages we were supposed to uh, purchase for our dates gotcha and i think that's where that was created yeah i saw the tuxes were all white yeah is that the same that was the style oh, of the that time was the style white was it <laughs> <laughs> white jackets <laughs> da haircuts sometime but white jackets do you have a favorite what? memory with a professor or a dance like what sticks out in your mind is one of the most fun memories of fisher well there were a lot of them uh the, I, a lot of fun dances. Us, our senior uh, ball at Oak Hill, I, I still recall, uh, and some of the uh, wonderful uh, times we had with the uh, the priest, uh, Father Pendergast. There was a great guy. He taught accounting, and uh, I, I still remember when <laughs> he would come in <laughs> and, and just ha have a, a look at us and say, "You know, gentlemen." <laughs> History in all these other courses, all these classes, thinking is not forbidden. <laughs> and he would get us all laughing so hard that we would all kind of forget that he was the teacher or yeah. we were the students, you right. know. Yeah. But the, the whole experience is one, uh, one that I remember. Yeah. The biggest thing that sticks in my mind is the a cross going up on the building with the yeah with the steel girders. I can still remember that yeah. a long time ago. Wow. Yeah. How, did, how did Fisher, being such a small class, shape you as a person past college? Well, oh, that's a good question. Well, I think it taught me some basics. Uh, you know, the Brazilian logo has kind of been ingrained in my mind through goodness, discipline, and knowledge through high school and college. And it, 
I think taught me to just always try to do the right thing yeah. and uh, play it straight, play yeah. life straight. And it's, it gave me a, a basic foundation that has proven well over the years for me. Yeah. And I think that it did for most of us because we were, we were taught not only in the classroom, but outside the classroom because we were so close. So we were, we were not in a seminary, but we were developed in our character by some pretty good priests. Yeah. And none of us are saints, but we, we were given some great guidelines. And when problems come up in life as they do for all of us, I to this day go back to, hmm, what would Father Prendergast say here? Right. So in that way, it, it gave me a basis for life that I really uh, couldn't be happier, couldn't be happier about because I'm not sure another school could have done it. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a great school. It is. To this day. Yeah. yeah definitely. Um, so where did you go from here? You graduated. I, went, I graduated in 1955 and uh, went to Buffalo Law School okay. up the thruway. And one Saturday night I was sitting in the library, the law library, shepherdizing legal cases, and my radio friends were kicking up a storm on Eagle Street, going to a record hop and having a good time. And I said to myself, you know, that's where I belong. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of two years, I decided, I said uh, to my parents that I was going to go into broadcasting. Yeah. And uh, that's what I did. Where did you go? Did Went that to, require uh, more schooling? Uh, no, at that time, there was no media department or yeah. anything like that. So you would have to start in a small market. So I, uh, I went to uh, WSAY locally. I, I was Jerry Jack, Mac McGuire, and Tommy Thomas. He wouldn't let us use our own names. Yeah. Because he thought if I, you left, then people would think the same announcers there, which is totally untrue. But that was the owner's philosophy. <laughs> so it was a good starting station at WSAY. And then... I uh, went down to Geneva, New York, okay. and worked there, and then for the next 40 years, uh, moved to WBBF, uh, and went into business, bought stations in 1978 with the Lincoln Group, and my partner and I ended up uh, owning eight radio stations. Wow. We sold them in 1998. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Was it a weird transition to go from such a small school? Was um, Buffalo Law School a larger school? Yes, it was. Was that strange? Yeah, it's not. It wasn't as large as it is now. Yeah. But it was a lot larger than Fisher. Yeah. And very tough school. Unlike Fisher, where if you had a problem, one of the professors would see you after class or meet you at the Maplewood for a beer. You were given your assignment, and that's it. Yeah. Then you'd be graded. It was impersonal. It was totally, from being totally personal, it went to totally right. impersonal. Right. And that was the biggest challenge uh, there. And a lot different ballgame. Yeah. Yeah, more dependent on the individual. Yeah. 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 I think Fisher's still to this day. I've always, this is, that's why I chose this school, because uh -huh. it was so small, not yes. compared to you know right. the fifty-eight people you had. But mm -hmm. I like that personal interaction. Yes. And I think to this day, Fisher still holds. I think you're right. That one-to-one. -one. I think it's a big selling point for the school. Have a yeah. good student-to-teacher ratio. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's harder to to do things impersonally in a. 300 400 person class right definitely so um the we're gonna go back to the cold war just a bit okay the um korean war was happening when you went here correct or yeah. had it ended it, uh it just ended yeah did that yeah. have an effect or yeah it did it, it gave us a lot of students yeah it did uh it wasn't uh an unpopular war as Vietnam was, but it was kind of a forgotten war. Yeah. Uh, it, it impacted, we had a lot of Korean vets here. Yeah. In, in our class and the class 
uh, after us. And the, uh, I would say the attention that topics like our debating topic, which was the recognition of communist China. Do you recognize it or don't you? The students weren't talking about that. Yeah. It's, it, I would say, was not as uh, universal a world as it is now, mm -hmm. where geography doesn't matter. In our era, that was a non-discussed topic. Yeah. I mean, a big trip was going to Batavia. But today, with all students around the world and geography not mattering at all, a different ball game. Yeah. So I would say the discussions at the uh, student level were totally different. They weren't what through uh, social media and everything else today, everybody checks out on their iPhone. They, it wasn't there. Yeah. I mean, it was a different era in communication. There, TV was a baby. There was no iPhone. There was no internet. The, the two key areas uh, for communication were newspaper and radio. Yeah. That's why those of us who were on radio, we were bigger than life because we gave everybody their information right. at that time. There were only two stations, black and white in Rochester, TV. Yeah. And they were 10-inch black and white set. So that was a whole different era right. that's hard to conceive right now. Right, yeah. So that's why people weren't discussing worldwide issues the way they do today. Yeah. It's not that they wouldn't be interested, but it wasn't in their world. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What did you guys do for fun? I know you had dances and you went we over had, to NAS, but did you do anything on uh, campus? We. We had some intramural sports. We had some fun. We had uh, uh, pretty basic things. We had the, uh, when we came in, the grease pole deal and the, uh, the, the pulling of the rope poles and things like that. And uh, we would go into uh, uh, pretty tame stuff, I'm sorry to <laughs> say. Uh, That's all right. Yeah, we'd, we'd go into McConnell's uh, dairy, you know, and, and, th and things like that. Uh, and have some good uh, Sundays and things of that nature. But we, we had uh, a lot of sports. We, we would attend sporting events and things like that. But since it was primarily a male school, why, the normal, sports and girls, so it was about <laughs> it. <laughs> um, I saw when I was looking through the newspapers that they were, Fisher was advertising summer classes and night classes. Did you ever take any of those? I never did. No. No, I think that was a uh, an attempted recruiting method for new students at the school. Okay. But I never attended any of those. Hmm. Yeah. Because now, you know, that's a very popular thing now. Sure. A lot of us have night class as a three-hour class. Uh -huh. You know, how long were your classes during the day typically? Uh, it would be a little over an hour. Yeah. Yeah, a little low. But we did go every day. Yeah. Yeah, so we had classes every day, you know. Right. You had the weekend off, though. Correct? Yeah, we had the weekends off. Okay. It was pretty much a nine to five day. Yeah. Yeah, very few night classes. But it was a lot simpler. Life was simpler. <laughs> it was 15 credits the typical, or? It was. It was yeah. the norm. 15 credits was something we all tried to hit. Yeah. So it was three, two, three, four classes a day, what? Yes, uh, I would say usually three. Okay. Yeah, usually three classes. Uh, five days, 15. Yeah. That's, that's it. Right. It yeah. was pretty basic stuff. And also because at that time they had to be hiring faculty, so they had right. to make it attractive to them as well. Right. At that time. Right. Did it follow the same schedule we have now? I have a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It did. And then a Tuesday, Thursday? 
I guess some things do say the same, don't they? <laughs> so when you went to the bars with the faculty, how late would you stay there with these priests? Were these late nights? Uh, well, you know. At the, the bar with... I might have to plead the Fifth Amendment. <laughs> <laughs> but most of them are gone, so I yeah. <laughs> No, we didn't stay out too late. No, we didn't. Uh, it would be mostly afternoon, early evening type of deals. Yeah. Yeah. Good deal. And they used to live here on the top floor, as you know. Yeah. And uh, so we had to get them home. <laughs> um, did you grow up in a rural or an urban background? Where did you? I grew up in Arundiquoit. Arundiquoit. Right. Culver Road uh, area, Culver and Merchants area. Uh, a lot of us <laughs> were in that area at that time. Yeah. So we would commute uh, daily, and we'd learn all the various ways to get here. And yeah, that was uh, not a bad commute at all. Yeah. How long was it, the commute? Uh, it took me about a half hour. Half hour. And you, did you have your own car? Did you take a bus? Uh, no. Um, I had the... Uh, uh, old jalopy, <laughs> a red Ford. Okay. Yeah. And we would do a lot of carpooling. Yeah. So that worked out. I'm not even sure there was a bus. Yes, there was a bus because many times when people would talk about Fisher because they didn't know what it was, they would refer to it as the bus stop on the hill. <laughs> <laughs> Um, did the feel of your, I know with Aquinas it felt the same, but the feel of your hometown feel the same as here? When we, I'm, I'm from a very small town mm -hmm. in Bath, New York, down by Cuca Lake. Uh -huh. um, so it was different for me to come up here to mm -hmm. a suburb. To me, this is big, mm -hmm. when it's not very big. Right. You yeah. know? So did it yeah. feel the same for you coming from Irondequoit or... No, the things I, change a little bit. Yeah, it was a little different. Yeah, it was a little different. It was a nice. It still is a great setting, and uh, it was, it was not something that was a, a big difference though. Yeah. Uh, not a night and day deal. Yeah. I said, yeah, this is fine. You know, <laughs> it was actually shorter to come to Fisher than it was to go to Aquinas, where we had to transfer buses Got downtown <laughs> and took all kinds of time. So it was kind of shorter, a little yeah. closer to home. Yeah. Did you consider other colleges, or was this you knew you were I coming did, here? I did, but my parents didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so they pretty much directed me to go here. And at that time, it's the only place that uh, they and I could afford to go. Right, right. Where else were you thinking about going? Uh, I didn't even think about another school because no. there weren't any options. Right. And most of us were in that situation. Yeah. So there was a lot of pressure from the priests at Aquinas to go here. Would they talk about it in your class? I or? wouldn't call it pressure, but I would say uh, a welcoming attitude. Everyone knew that they were going up to form a new college here. And Bishop Carney, who was a wonderful bishop mm -hmm. and had great foresight to purchase this land next to the expressway. Mm -hmm. And when given the choice, chose to go right up to the expressway. <laughs> rather than leaving any empty space yeah. uh, really proved to be a very bright move. Yeah. Uh, so we all, we all went where the priests were going, but it's because we wanted to, yeah, yeah. yeah. more than because we had to. We liked them. Yeah. We, we just, we enjoyed their, their companionship and their leadership. So you were a history major. Yes. What other majors were popular on campus? Accounting was a very popular major. Yeah. Uh, we had a couple of English majors. Remember Dick Knox and Leo Kessering. Dick was one of our classmates. Uh, pretty basic. And then we had a couple of our graduate friends uh, who were into medicine. Yeah. Uh, and uh, John Petropoli, unfortunately, he's deceased now, but uh, he was one of the first who went on to medical school from here. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a tough jump to go from a college first year yeah. to go to be accepted in any 
medical school. Right. And it was because Father Murphy, the president, made a personal call to the medical schools that he, he was considered. Wow. And ho we had uh, Jose Torres, uh, who was a member of our class, as a doctor uh, in Guam. Wow. And when he, he's the one that wins the prize coming back furthest for reunions. <laughs> so there was a sprinkling of majors, I would say. Yeah. How big, as a history major, how big were your classes? How many people were in your class? We didn't have many people, seven, maybe eight. Seven. And that was your, that was the history department? That, that's it. Those were oh, the yeah, history. that was it. There was only, I think it was Father Manelli was the only one who taught it. Yeah. So he's a guy who knows a lot of stuff. He had to know it all. <laughs> he had to know it all because he didn't have any help. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, let's see. So you went on to Buffalo Law School. Yes. And you were talking about how Father Murphy had to make a personal call for the man who went to medical school. Yes. Was it, how did Buffalo Law School receive Fisher? They received me... I would say well yeah. and fairly, but they questioned the credentials yeah. of the school. And there were a couple of uh, faculty members at the time who had friends who were attorneys okay. in the area who vouched for us and the school. Yeah. And I have to say they were very fair yeah. and admitted there were a few of us who went on. So I would say fairly, but questioning a bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you didn't have any trouble with no. getting in? No. Right? Did not. Did not. No. So you have your 60th reunion coming we do. up in September. Yes, we do. Are you excited for that? Yeah, I am. I look forward to see the guys. Yeah. Do you guys have any plans, or is it just a dinner? Or? We're, oh, we're thinking about a couple of things, and we're going to have, we had a meeting the other day about it. So we we got to uh, we're going to have a get together Friday over at President Rooney's uh, place, and then uh, have a dinner uh, and on Saturday night, and then uh, go to uh, Sunday mass and have uh, breakfast nice. together. So that'll be kind of fun to spend a weekend with the guys. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Yeah. So one comes from Guam. Yeah. Where is everyone else spread out? Oh, they're all over the country. Yeah. Uh, Larry Briggs is out in real estate in California. He was a Marine Colonel. Wow. I mean, they're all over the place. <laughs> and uh, Les Lesniak is, owns a winery uh, in California, wow. one of our good class members. So we hopefully can get him away from the vines <laughs> a little bit to, to join us. And uh, Jim Gaffney is in Albany. And we've got some folks down in uh, North Carolina. Uh, so they're, and Florida, they're all over the place. Yeah. And a, maybe about uh, seven or eight of us who are people who've stayed here. Yeah. Do you do this, how often do you all get together? Well, not to, our reunions are every five years. Okay, every five years. Yeah, but we, we try to get together, those of us who are in this area, uh, once or twice a year. Yeah. Well, I think that's all of our time, correct? Okay. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful day.